with somebody who we have these tough conversations and we get really frustrated, right? Saying to people you are racist actually isn't a motivator for people. So this is about helping people understand that the behaviors that they, the choices that they make with their behaviors actually have an impact in a certain way. So it's saying to people, when you said faggot, that actually was a real problem, and let's talk about it. Which is different than saying you were homophobic and that was really wrong. If they might be homophobic, that is probably true. If your goal is to help people work to the other side, though, that isn't necessarily a way to enter into that conversation to help them get to the other side. And I get it, though. Sometimes you just gotta tell people, what's up, right? You gotta say, that was homophobic, you are homophobic, and I I get that. But in terms of getting people to the other side, we are trying to help people understand that the behavior that they they exhibit are challenging. Now, when we think about the relationship between powerlessness and rage, what we believe to be true is that powerlessness feeds this idea of rage. That when people feel like they have no other things, they have no other recourse, that they have called, that they have emailed, that they have voted, that they've done all those things, and it still didn't change, that is what got us into the street. So people say to me all the time during, what about Northern Penn? They say, what about the QT and Ferguson? And I tell people, people shouldn't have to protest. They shouldn't have to be out there. Nobody should have had to think that the only way that they could be heard was by standing in the middle of the street. And that is what happens when people don't feel like they have power. And when people don't have hope. And when despair sets in, is that people choose to live another day. And when they can, in making that choice, they also choosing to take that power in whatever way they can. And we have to live, in a, we have to build a world where people don't ever feel like they have to take that power in those ways. That it should just be a just I think about my conversation with President Obama, so we met with Obama the second time in February, um, and he was annoyed with me. And I said to him, uh, I said a couple things, but I said, yeah, President Obama, I started with President Obama, I appreciate that your language has gotten better since the last time we made a public statement about emergence. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. But one of the things that I said to him in, in the police room in the road, He's trying to help people understand that, like, we didn't want to protest, right? We don't, I want to go back to not having to be in the middle of the street. Like, people don't wake up saying, please let me stay in the middle of the street. People definitely wake up saying, I don't feel like I can do anything else. And, like, how do we make sure structures and systems actually bear down on people in ways that make that real? And we won't accept people saying this is really hard. It wasn't hard to enslave everybody, right? That wasn't, like, people figured out how to do that. So we say to people, you can actually figure out how to do it. And that should be a part of the way you think about your work. That when we think about the welfare rollback, when we think about all these rollbacks and these programs that have been put in place to really hurt people, that that wasn't too big of a lift. That it shouldn't be too big of a lift to undo it. And the question then becomes for us, how do we build a coalition of people who actually are 